Welcome, everybody, Behind the Bash, uh, the podcast, Radio 1, Hot 107.9, I won, man, uh, man, the uh, the response has been overwhelming to the podcast and all the teasers. Hey. How fun is this? Uh, my name is Devin Steele, Program Director of Hot 107.9, um, Director of Birthday Bash. This will be my fourth birthday bash, joined by Beyonce Aloysius, Hello. who was born at Birthday Bash. Literally, uh, I think, <laughs> I was doing the math the other day, I think this is my 24th Birthday Bash. Nice. Yeah, so, uh, but yes, I am Beyonce, I run the stage and help do the planning. Nice, and special guest this week, filling in for Gil Jones. Gil was, uh, you know, we all have 100 jobs, you know what I'm saying, but man, that's that's the incredible thing. It was only right to have our first guest for Behind the Bash, the one, the only new face. New face. Oh, man. It's such an honor. Thank you. Um, my respect for both of you is tremendous. How many, how many years is this for you? Uh, going to birthday bash? Yeah. Because you just put that in. So is, it's been 24 birthday bashes? It's been this or 28th. 28th. Yeah. 28th. I probably missed seven of those. Yeah. Wow. Like when I was super daddy. Because yeah, there was one yeah, time yeah. where I did take my daughter when it was a so-so death bow wow one. That one. And, I, mm. and she went to sleep. And I just remember having to hold her for like the whole show and my arm going <laughs> dead, like one arm. And I'm in Lakewood, like with, ah, but it was great because we saw. I'm so glad you said that because we were talking about our favorite. That had to be probably one of, it was Lakewood uh -huh. and the stars were out. Jermaine Dupree had one of the best birthday bashes ever. He walked is where they had the hoods. Mm -hmm. He walked everybody yep. out and like lined them up on stage. You didn't and know who they, were. they had like these mason hoods over their head. Yeah. And so it almost looked like the Star Wars creatures, mm -hmm. like the Chewbaccas and stuff. <laughs> and so they had like these hoods over their head. And so he would just walk by and tap each one. You never knew who You who never was knew who it was yeah. until he took the hood off and like they would just start going. It was Bow Wow, Brat, yeah. uh, Kanye West, Usher, wow. Jay Z. I mean, it was. It had to be mm -hmm. one of the most epic That's performances ever. And the best part is, my sister was in Detroit, and I was wondering because so so deaf, and because Bow Wow did a show in Detroit that day mm -hmm. for some reason. I'm like, well, I know he's not going to be here because if he just did Detroit, yeah, yeah. he made it to that, and I'm yeah. like, oh, that just let that make, inspires me to see people do shows like that, like yeah. back to back. City Shady to got city. the jet, yeah. yeah. Technology <laughs> and 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 private jets have really changed the game for mm -hmm. a lot of people. Um, I remember. I've done numerous shows in different cities before where people had gigs that night and later on. As a matter of fact, I know one of the years that we piggybacked when I was in Memphis off of Atlanta, I think Trey Songs was at Gold Room one night and <laughs> came and did Memphis. Mm. Literally went straight back to the airport. I literally just dapped him up, went straight back, and he was at the Gold Room by like one. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, modern technology and, yeah. and, 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 late and travel. Late night party scene in Atlanta. And late yeah. night, yeah. <laughs> and late I think night that's travel. why I don't work with the art or travel with the artists as much. Because, like, when Fabo did Birthday Bash and I'm, I'm helped manage and assist him, he did Birthday Bash. And I'm like, well, I'm staying. He's like, well, we got this other club. And I'm like, well, all right, I'll see you guys yeah. later because this is what I do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. It's, it's really a fascinating thing, though, when you're looking at, you know, a concert as big as Birthday Bash and the timing. Right now, for this year, we're already working on. Timing. People are asking, you know, to double up. We have several people on the show that are doing the show and literally going to regional shows in other markets to to double up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's just the um, the, the the show hustle is real um, these days more than ever. Um, new face. I think you know I knew of you when I first got to Atlanta, but you know, seeing you around, I'd see you at a lot of different functions. You're um, everywhere. You have this. Um, people don't know who you are. You're you're you're. Collector of, of nostalgia when it comes to hip hop, everything Atlanta and a lot of these artists, I think from, you know, to Jeezy to Tip or whoever comes to town, if it's Bun B or whoever it is. I mean, you have, you know, source magazines that have been signed. You have pictures, you have cassette tapes, you know what I mean? And Beyonce and I were talking. If that was that organized, I've got to have some incredible hip hop moments. <laughs> I was just never the the He's photography so guy. Like New yeah, Face yeah. was definitely there. I think it's the yeah. Capricorn in me. Yeah, yeah. that's the Capricorn. Yeah. Yeah. So but your tagline is New Face. Was there. Was there. That's right. So it's not official in the end unless New Face was there, See, right? And the people made that one up, which yeah. is great because, you know, Kenny Burns taught me if you create a brand, you got to become the brand. And so, like I said, the birthday bash that I miss is because I was like a single father at that mm. time. And it was like, uh, just focus on this. And yeah. I tried to get out way on the weekend, go to Uptown Comedy Clubs with Nard and that type of thing and experience that nightlife then. But at that point, it was like all dads. But once she got a little bit older, and like I yeah. said, that birthday bash, the social death one, like the first one, like... We're going to go outside, and I'm going to just carry you with the stroller. There you go. <laughs> and he did. I saw him and the girls everywhere he went. Such a dope dad. Always mm -hmm. gave him such amazing Thank experiences. You. That's yeah. dope, man. Um, I think you shared with me, you know, you came from the house, and I 
got to a point in the show where I was kind of, you know, chilling, and I, my brother and my nephew were there, and I think this is the first year I was here. So I got to Atlanta in March, and the, the show was in June. I was actually <laughs> working on Birthday Bash before I got before the job, get, wow. which is kind of funny. People were, you know, making phone calls and texting and, you know, asking questions and that kind of thing. But um, you came in front of the house, and you were like, yo, check it out. And you had this huge album, or you actually have it in a frame, but you actually have all these – every ticket – from every birthday bash that you've attended, old Ticketmaster tickets, and those are news. Those are print on them, so they fade. You yeah, know what I mean? But that's, that's a that's a really that's a really dope piece of of um, of nostalgia. You know? Yeah. And I wish I would have laminated them because some of them, like you see, are starting to fade. fade. And I'm yeah. like, oh. And the other thing is too, I go to shows now. And everything's on the phone. Yeah, everything's and, digital. And I'm looking like uh, I want my printed ticket. Yeah, and they yeah. looking at me like it's on your phone or and it's like and then so and it's like Kendrick Lamar, Common, Dave Chappelle. Like I got the computer print out, but it's just not the same. It's yeah, like that Ticketmaster Live Nation, that 1079, that that those were always special because I can just look at the ticket stub and just close my eyes and be like, oh, yeah, that was that yeah. was that one. That. What's um? <laughs> you had an installation in um ATL 50, the 50th year of um of hip hop, and it was really dope seeing you, um, and having your own. Um, installation is a part of that um, mm-hmm. program, and of course with the uh, the earwax exhibit, which I think is really special. You know, a guy who would come to Atlanta and go record shopping is a lifelong DJ. Um, to actually see that and be a part of that, and and to to see all the things really that it's not like you just started doing this. Like, mm-hmm. what is I mean, what is it about a show like Birthday Bash? And you know, what's it mean to you? And what what does it mean to a to a city like Atlanta? Um, in particular, Atlanta, because you know I travel and I'm from Detroit, and we never really had that. We had you know, Super Bowl events or something special would come to town. But mm-hmm. when I got here in Atlanta, it was like in a tradition. Like it started with the buzz where you guys would kind of warm up to it on, on the radio and like, yeah. oh, we, we're counting down and you're ready. And yeah. then it's then it's like the announcement of the guests. And I'm like listening because, again, I was a father, so I'm dropping kids off. And so I'm listening to six from the morning show on up and like, oh, tomorrow we're going to announce this guest. So it was just like this anticipation and then it just became a tradition for me. Mm-hmm. Um, then the best part for me, it was like it turned really into a hustle because I think at some point you guys would do an announcement and, and the first batch of tickets would be $10.79 yeah. or ninety-seven five dollars if it was early right, on. Right, right. So I would buy a bunch of those. And then that would be like a way to make my money back. And it's like, I'll be outside, like, oh, you didn't buy tickets to birthday bash? You didn't get- I got you. I right, got right. you. Just pay this much. And, but that it just became a tradition. <laughs> so you're like, admitting that you were our own birthday, yeah, yeah, official see, birthday bash like shopper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, you know, that's that. There's nothing, there's nothing, that's not scammer uh, mentality at right. all. But you would wait. That's a hustle, though. Basically, a sense of urgency for tickets because you know what would sell out. Yes, what would you sell them for? 30, 40, 100. For a hundred, yeah, fifty to hundred. It, it would sell out. Yeah, because it was pe- wow. That's what, that, especially that's, at Lakewood. That's a real hustle. Yeah, yeah. So and, and t- I'm stopping the people like you don't have to climb the gate at Lakewood. You and know. they did. That was yeah. the thing. Like <laughs> the gate, the gate at Lakewood. That was you know it was that almost was like an thing. Olympic event at one mm. point. You know to see who who how how fast you could Who'd climb before that? security shut it down. Yeah, wow. man. But those that it was just a tradition of it, and plus the amount of people and access you've seen that day because the buzz around the city, of course, is after parties, and of course these people are always in the city. So prior to that, you would see a little or Jeezy or anybody that's traveling to here, yeah. you would see them at a Chick-fil-A or a Publix or right. just at the Linux, Linux Mall. Like yeah. Linux Mall. Like, here's this whole thing that I do. Linux Mall, you go to Green, Bright. Like, you're going to see these people because they got a shop. They're going to go to Georgia. They're going to go to Walter. Walters. Right. So, yeah, so I would just go. I would be at these places initially, but you would just see all these people. And that's then it got him to a point where, like, if I got this access, I'm going to just bring some of their material. I'm going to bring yeah. the cassette tapes. I had digital cameras. I've had Polaroids camera because I was at Clark Atlanta. So I just seen the access of celebrities that we didn't get in Detroit. Mm. Um, and so that's what I love most about Birthday Bash. And, of course, just support my friends. You know, yeah. we had Beyonce, Rashawn Ali, Ryan, the guys, and they were working. I would just see them work. That that would motivate me is just seeing, like, my friends really do real things in yeah. real time and not just, like, the highlights of it. Like, Instagram wasn't big, so – they weren't able to be transparent about what they did. Right. But me seeing it in real time and from the radios and them announcing it and being early in the morning in the prep time, that really inspired me personally. Instagram, we were on MySpace back yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was your favorite birthday bash? Oh, man. Um, I would say the one where we didn't think Tip was going to be there uh, because I, my friend Mr. Soul, he said he did some signs and I didn't know. And it ended up being the game over signs mm. um, with little flip on um, a billboard. Yeah. Um, that was one. Um, Jeezy bringing Mary J. Blige out. 
Mm. Um, one that stands out there was a boxing ring, and I remember because Future mm-hmm. came out, Trey Songs was there, Fifty Cent being there, it just, and it's just like the surprises. Like Plies came out with a Versace bathrobe and throwing money all over the stage. <laughs> it's just like all these moments that just come to my mind. But um, probably that that little flip um, with a Ti one, yeah, Ti one. Um, anytime Pastor Troy came out it was a treat because it's like to me. It's like it can't be a surprise this time, and then he pulls up and do his song, and it's just like church. Every time, yeah. it's like yeah. church. Doom. As soon as you hear it, doom, doom, doo, doo. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you still see the people doing it. So it's just like timeless experience, and it just became tradition for me. Yeah. Who, who was the most? I mean, we're gonna say probably Pastor Troy. Shout out to Pastor Troy. Uh, you know, the most uh, you know performed artist of all time. Birthday Bash. Who would be the top three? I know Fabo probably have to be up there. <sighs> Fabo's up there, um, but Pastor Troy for sure. Uh, I, I got to go back through. Dro, Dro, because he, he used to always have a summer. T, you know, Ti. T- no, I yeah. would yeah. easily say Ti. Dro, Ti. Um, third would be maybe Dro, I guess, because Tip. But. Yeah, because Dro would always have a summertime song. Yeah. We'd be in. He would. But you know what? Pastor Troy is brilliant. So he would be like, hey, can I perform a birthday bash? And this might have been like 10 years later after, you know, we uh, we ready. Mm-hmm. And he'd be like, listen, I know you don't have a slot for me. I just need one credential. I will sit on the side of the stage. And whenever there's some downtime, he'll just tell the DJ to be ready. And you, you, there's always downtime. Somebody's oh, always yeah. running late. And so <laughs> literally, wow. we, would, we would give him one credential. So whenever there was like that filler time... Jalion or whoever it is, they hit gotcha. the track and Troy runs out there and does his thing. So I mean, you know, it's that helmet it, and belt. He's always easy and like he's just yeah. always very professional and ready to go. Yeah, but you know, there's a lot of artists that don't. I'm not going to say anymore. Everything is such a production a lot these days. But it's just guys like that that you try to help win and you want them to win any way possible. You know what I mean? Um, and that, that that's a great story. And just always there, always ready, always ready. <sighs> what's Be a, ready? <laughs> what's a birthday bash moment? that you think birthday bash is due for that you would like to see? Well, you guys really, over, well, that, that 50th year celebration, like that was like a, a, a big moment for me personally because you guys celebrated a lot of genres, the areas of hip, the west side of Atlanta, east coast Atlanta, but maybe like like the women, like mm-hmm. like a whole round of like women, like ladies first, like okay. just celebrating the women's of Atlanta because I think the Hawks reached out to me and they were looking for women and they was like, well, they need thirty eight thousand followers and I'm like, well, oh, well, that doesn't mean they're not great, but you yeah, know, yeah. but it's, it seems like women usually don't really get because it's usually a guy that brings them out, yeah. but just to be them see highlighted because we do have a, a lot of great women and and it's it's their time, you know, yeah. in music you see they running the radio, yeah. sure. I mean, the game has changed. I can remember, you know, six, seven years ago, voting on the Source Awards and going to the awards, and the category was really suffering. I mean, Nikki was there doing her thing. I think Kaya was always in, in the category, Remy. you know, and she was doing her thing. Remy, who didn't have a lot of song, wasn't consistent with, with – with, and then I think Rap City was in the category one year, but it was like so really, few. really lacking in everything. Mm-hmm. You know, things go in phases, you know what I mean? Now we've had this incredible. We had a lot of women on the show last year, mm-hmm. um, which is great. But there's, as you see, the level of talent, and um, I mean the popularity is there, but the level of talent I think is coming full circle with women too. There's a lot of women out there that are really killing the game. They're really doing their thing, you know. So you know, to your point, I think that's definitely think I definitely think maybe it's time. I think that's an important element to really mm-hmm. call attention to that. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, sure. last year, I mean, what, didn't glitter gloss come out? Glitter gloss, Lotto, Lotto. Uh, Cardi. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that one with the purse. Yeah, yeah we had at least three or four ladies perform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Glow, Glow, Glow had a big Glow. set. Last yeah. year was Glow's year. It after. was heavy women last yeah. year. It I mean, was. you know, it typically was. with Birthday Bash, you might get one or two ladies representing, you know, yeah. but I mean, I think the past two years, there have been more, like to your point, women. female mm-hmm. uh, MCs just, you know, really representing and doing their thing. Yeah, so. Sexy Red was on the show last year. Yeah. That was on mm-hmm. her, on her way up, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> We put that in place <laughs> as soon as we heard the first, the, heard the record. You know what I oh, mean? I so that went viral because I posted the whole audience saying, "Booty all big, buddy brown." Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm perplexed because I'm like, "What she's saying?" But we're all in unison when it comes to music. It's just absolutely. Like it's, it's no like, matter what the messaging is, sometimes yeah. <laughs> and no matter it. what the messaging is. Mm-hmm. Beyonce, what is it? I mean, as far as women are concerned, 
um, you know, what, what's something you, what's something you'd like to see, you know, the ladies, you know, do on stage or, or, or represent, you know, how would you like to see that for women? Because, you know, the general rule of thumb is, and this is, you know, we're just talking hip hop. This is not my, my personal, like I, I love women. I've got three daughters. I've been married for 23 years, you know what I mean? But it's, um, and generally, you know, guys don't buy tickets to go see women. You know what I mean? It, it, it clubs, it clubs. True. It's usually women that buy uh, tickets to support to other women. women. Okay. You know what I mean? In, in other clubs. I'm just saying traditionally, but I think the paradigm has really shifted in the last few years. You know what I mean? There's so many women that hold their own, that have their same their their own movements, that have their own massive crowd bases. You know, from mm-hmm. the Glorillas of the world to the Sexy Reds and the, and the Lottos is a bona fide superstar and all these other, you know, women who have had an, an incredible run the last three or four years. You know? I think – what to your point, the paradigm is totally shift because I mean now, you know, women would traditionally go see Trey Songs or they right. want to go see like the the name brand men, you know, who are at the top of their game. But now when you talk that they they love the Mariah the Scientist. They yeah, love yeah. Lotto. They love Glow. Like they will buy tickets to go see these shows and you'll see a majority of women out there, you know, selling out crowds and, and representing. Yeah. So I really think that's cool number one, for women to support women. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something I've wanted to see for a long time. And then not only that, um, for these ladies to be out here and selling as much as the men and getting these big deals and and selling out arenas, you know, Mm -hmm. like Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi and Nicki and and having these number one albums and doing what they're doing. So Mm -hmm. I think that is definitely important. And, you know, I just, I love seeing the women who are fixing the crowns and, you know, just, I just, I I love the female support. And even here, like the one thing about Hot, like our ladies, like we always have such a cool group of ladies who support one another yeah. and like you know y'all have the group chat and then we have our own ladies chat yeah, you yes, know like yes, we're planning uh, uh, what we're doing behind the scenes and just yeah. the unity of it like girl unity is so important not only for us but i mean even just you know to show the young ladies you know that it, it's cool to, to support one another and i think the men need it too like I, I think it's really big for y'all like i mean even to to do that but you know yeah. Birthday bash! I can't wait to see what we have Shout in store out for this year. My sister, DJ Princess Cut, like, Princess Cut, doing her, her thing. She, she be out here shining with the dress code, and I'll be, I can't wait to see what she wears because she, you know, she brings it out. And months prior to the birthday bash, it was a show at State Farm, and it was all ladies. It was like Lady of Rage, Mia X, Trina, yeah, uh, Eve, Remy, and it was like. And it, to your point again, it was like sold out. Yeah, it was like. Oh, this is, so it can happen. Sure, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's coming back around full circle. Mm-hmm. Is what I'm saying. I think I saw a video the other day, and I was, you know, intrigued. I saw. Um, I guess they were in the studio, No Limit, and they were redoing some stuff, and they were doing a live version of uh, a Mercedes. I can tell, like, oh, wow. that's a song that never a lot of yeah. people have never seen Mercedes before. You know right. what I mean? Because she was a very limited access. No that album artist. cover and that album cover, right? <laughs> that album cover, but it was like such a big club record, especially mm-hmm. in the southeast. You play it now, and people still lose their shit when you and play there's it. There's been multiple remixes, and there's been a lot sample. of different remixes. Mm-hmm. But I saw a video the other day, and I was like, it came across my timeline. I was like, wait a minute. It's like, damn, they're in the studio, and like they were playing it, like there was like an orchestra playing it, and they were redoing it, like singing the hook and everything. So I was cool. like, wow, that's what's mm-hmm. up. So to your point, you know, I think we've come full circle when it comes to. Um, female hip hop artists. Uh, yeah. When it comes to that, you know, new face. One thing that I love uh, when you always come around, you always bring some very interesting um, relics. Um, <laughs> should I say what do you, what do you have there? What, what is that? So this one was like a collaboration between uh, Juice Magazine and at the time Birthday Bash Nine. Okay. Um, and so you, I guess you could see some of the performers who were involved in that, and you got your little John and Scrappy. Young oh, yeah. Ti, Twisted, Kanye West, and Yang Yang Twins. Of course, D Rock. Um, of course, the you know it goes through the history. You know, look, we still got early one, wow. Emperor Cersei. Um, and I all had always kept this one because I I mess with Juice, but you know, yeah. Ryan Cameron was young Rashawn Ali. This yours Lord. truly right here, <laughs> young B. You see it, ten year challenge, bikini. So and you know these are like people again supporting my friends. So yeah, just to see them be able to work and and and, and the, for CJ like to be wearing a shirt of mine and that that was on Billboard. He always did our <laughs> shirts and like everything. That's for dope. All the I didn't promo. know that. Mm, oh I yeah, he that. he was super talented. And like if you want something creative, the jerseys. Yeah, and, and just all the moments looking young, scrappy, and and this is I always pull this out if I'm with some of these people because. Some of these artists aren't in those major magazines, the Double XL oh, and the Sources. You know what? That's the jersey. I was trying the... to figure out what year it was. That was the jersey hey. that we had. The um, they gave us the Falcons oh, jerseys. Yeah. I, I was see, I was just trying see? to figure it out. And then even here, it got the history of birthday bash. So this says in nineteen ninety six. That is so cool. 
Oh, that is dope. that was Biggie. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mafia busted the scene. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, a variety. So I definitely didn't do it. Right yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, those playoffs. were like the two. Like, I started Center. at Lakewood. Yeah, I didn't get Civic Center, so I count that. Now Lakewood, ninety eight. <laughs> well, I didn't get this one. Big Pun, Pun Maya. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't. Is that the one? Does it say Maya on there? Maya. Yeah, that's wow. the year she got booed. I just want to say that. <clears throat> oh, got booed. Okay, so I didn't make this one. Now ninety nine. Yep, daughter was born. Yep, no limit soldier, slick Rick. We need to uh, we need to repost that. You know the the beautiful things about you know about these Internet. entertainment magazines is, you know, at most major markets, a lot of markets that have a lot of nightlife and a lot of lifestyle, um, you know, would always have these weekly magazines, mm-hmm. and it was so much to keep up with because you'd want to see, you know, pictures of yourself from the club or from yeah. big events, and to see this in Atlanta, Chicago had a really dope one. We had um, one called Party Source in Memphis, which was pretty cool. But you know, uh, I, you know, you actually had to lay these out. You know what I mean? In old then. school four color separation when they first started doing uh, no Photoshop, full no. color flyers. Yeah, I mean these are laid out. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. That's the amazing thing. Creative Juice loafing. Did, does that yeah, creative. Well, yeah. This about. But you know. Juice did such an awesome yeah. job. Juice World, and then also, um, what's the guy's name with that one? Uh, Crunk Magazine. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They always did that. I know another big moment was. Um, Baby J, I didn't know full circle, but I was in birthday bash and I remember a helicopter coming. Yep. Um, and they were throwing money um with Meech's face on it. Yep. Uh, BMF dollars. <laughs> I didn't know it was Jade at the time, but I remember picking it up and I remember that moment. But that was a fun one because people were like, <laughs> no, that's, that's you know, guy, you see money right that's now. That's the like, second time only I've heard Atlanta. that story in a week. Only you in know, Atlanta. Like that so heavy BMF days, they flew over Lakewood. Literally and threw money with Meech's face because yep. apparently I think he maybe Blue was supposed to perform or right. was gonna be on a, somebody in BMF was supposed to be inside but they weren't able to so like we're gonna make an uh, appearance one way or what, another. I don't remember what happened. With that. Uh, and <laughs> I, I want to know who was in that marketing meeting for them and come and join us on the show because that was um I mean to know that you pretty much had a um, a blank check to do whatever that you oh, wanted yeah. to you know those days. Hannah and Jade were definitely heavy in that. Yeah. Scene. Mm-hmm. And some of the pictures, Jay, I showed Jay this a lot. She was like, yeah, I took that picture. I took that picture. Juice, some of those, <laughs> a photo with T.I. with the fur coat. She was like, I, and wow. Diddy, she was like, I took that picture. Her nice. and Jade was all over, yeah. And they yeah. had like people like Julia Beverly, Ozone yeah, yeah. Magazine. Yeah. But it wasn't Shout central to, Julia, to yeah. Atlanta. But if Atlanta had an event, mm-hmm. they you know, you'll see, you'll see Beyonce and Ludacris yeah. and Killer, young Killer Mike holding up his Ozone Magazine. Um, yeah, but, and it's definitely important because, like you said, this is not on digital People don't have the. You can't go out and buy this. It's That's not right. going to be an eBay, you know. And yeah. I'm not one of the perfect for profit, so you're not going to see it on eBay and me selling it. Yeah. And just to see them people do it again. Like I mean, little John was just at the Super Bowl. Little Scrappy. This is years ago. And little Scrappy still I on mean, the social relevant media. Relevant on TV. Relevant. Staples, you know, you know and entertainment. Shawty Low, you know, it's coming up. His anniversary. Fabo just did it last year. You yeah. know, so JD. With those famous socks he wore, and that's the uh, dirty, uh, dirty awards edition. <laughs> dirty awards, dirty awards and birthday was a very bash. special event. Yeah, yeah. and birthday bash. Some of the points out. Um, I would buy, I always buy t-shirts or souvenirs. But remember the vendor, um, candles. Uh, Kenya, Kenya candles. candles. Kenya candle creations Patience, with from gel, Decatur. She made a gel candle, so I bought that one. Then she made dirty award candles that were on the table. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I dope. still have it with the gel on it. Man. I must have missed that year when I came to the dirty awards. It was the first year, so yeah. But shout out to Kenya, yeah. man. Yeah. Eastside. You know, speaking of merch, uh, Beyonce, what else do you have there? Um, you know, if you're watching this, make sure that you you know go to YouTube and go to hotspotatl.com. Make sure that you see you know that you can watch if you're listening as well. That's last year's design by def- myself. I, this oh, is actually one of my favorite ones. Yeah, I like how it feels. Um, this was 2020 through two. This mm-hmm. is 22. You know, we okay. went to the basketball jerseys, which is the MLK you know mm-hmm. Hawks jersey with the black. This one was 20 21. Yep. Was this one y'all? The twenty fifth anniversary. Georgia State. Outside? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This Both is the of the Monte. One. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Monte and the wearing it. Yeah. Obviously, we talked about this one. This is the Hawks jersey that so was that birthday was best nine. Nine. Wow. Who? Uh, this, this is. One. It's like a red baseball jersey, right? It, we, we, went, we went through a whole line of red base, uh, just baseball jerseys. Yeah. My black jersey, my white jersey. I think this is two thousand fifteen. Mm. You got a whole man. I tell you man. what. Well, this is man. only a few, and I was just grabbing out the closet. <laughs> This is probably the one I wear the most because it's all black and you just throw it on real quick. With the name. I'm not sure which oh, one. Yeah. Yeah, see yeah. me, I would have had them framed and I would have been yeah. like, put them on the wall and 
Man, you. I, I know. I need to. Like, I need to have. But it just it becomes so much. Like, it, where do you store all your stuff? Because like my someone came to my garage and they were like, "How many boxes of stuff do you have?" And I was like, "I'm not throwing this away." They were like, Same. "Well." I don't know what to tell I have you. Have a room, and then when my daughter moved out, it was like, "Oh, I got space." And now that room has got full, so it's like <laughs> I need a bigger. Even posters and stuff. I'm running out of wall space. There's yeah. one poster I just put on the ceiling now because like I have my walls look like that literally. Like, and it's just. Is your house inside a museum? Yeah, it, it definitely is. Like, it's because there's the door, and then it's the rest of the house. But it's it's in, it's impossible for people to just walk past the museum without me being a tour guide because they're like. Like, if they come to service, my, say some a cable guy, like, he's not going to go straight to the computer or the right. cable Wi-Fi. Right, he's, right. Like, he's like, whoa. What is this? I'm like, no, my cable, I need my Wi-Fi fixed. You got that? I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, and, damn, and, they found me. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> then they follow me on Instagram. Like, you remember me? I did your cable. Yeah. <laughs> or the Uber driver. It's like, <laughs> I'll follow you. It's like, man, yeah. but yeah, it's everywhere. It's like a museum. So that's what's fun about being able to put my stuff on ex- display in other these exhibits like Earwax and uh, Rock the Bells Cruise mm-hmm. we recently did, um, just to get it out the house and and I have a little bit of space, but yeah, <laughs> can only imagine. Yeah, we're always, um, you know, it, it's interesting that you and you, you know, you're a historian, but you pay attention to the details, even to to notice, you know, the small things, even the timeline that you pretty much described, like you know, the save the date, and then. The announcement, if it's a first wave of artists, or we try to do as many artists as possible, depending. A lot of it is, you know, well thought out. We put on, there's a lot of hours, you know, into the organization, you know, of the show. But for you to notice that, you know, I mean, that it, that goes a long way, you know, to and make. I always knew it was a surprise. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, I, always, I always knew, like, what it was. But, you knew the routine. Yeah. But yeah. then it, I just knew, I noticed my levels too with the things too, with being, having relationships with the artists. Then I get the text, yeah, I'm doing birthday. I'm like, it, it's it's like bittersweet because I like to be surprised, but the more up I am in networking, yeah. I'm already kind of knowing. Like last year, Fable, like we, I'm doing. I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll come in with you. <laughs> so I brought Ooh. this. I found this because my thing was I always love keeping the credentials. Yeah, and so you know we would always go back and forth between like people trying to scam us and stuff like True. that. So people we would wear the wristbands, and then we have these, and then you know at one point we were like, yeah, you know we thought it was super smart. We were like, yeah, we're gonna laminate the entire schedule, and we're gonna put the on air schedule and the sound schedule, and just every every single schedule. And you know from exactly. birthday bash how schedule. many times the schedule changes. You put X's. So finally we were just like, you know what, this doesn't make sense. But for birthday bash two thousand. And How do you read that in the dark? Oh my God! It's that was another thing. And, four point. And you know the phones were like that. Like we didn't yeah, yeah, have like yeah. the the lights Big. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But this was uh, June fourteenth, two thousand three, birthday bash eight. And so the schedule performing was oh my gosh, I need my glasses. Um, secret to close it, which I can't even remember who that was. That might have been the Jermaine Dupree year because it was at Lakewood. That might have been Jermaine Dupree, but Ludacris and friends. Uh, Little John and Friends, everybody's in Little Friends. It, I think it was the first year we did the Lisa Left Eye Lopez Award. Mm. Uh, Young, Bone Crusher, Killer Mike, Rashida, Big Boy, uh, Three Six Mafia, David Banner, um, Pastor Troy, Talib Kweli, Secret, uh, Smiles and South Star, Hitman Sammy Sam, Young Bloods, Joe Budden, Baby D, uh, Lil C, Canton Jones. I mean, it was. You know, that year, that couple of years up in there was a, a humongous year for Southern hip hop. Mm-hmm. Those few years right there, not just with, you know, the Lil Johns of the world and the Three Six Mafias, but David Banner had an amazing he run did. then. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's just like that, that lineup brings back so many memories from so many friends and people that have such such big, David big, big Banner songs. Will, will pop up a lot too. David it, Banner popped up a lot too. A lot. Um, and then I remember he did Heal the Hood mm-hmm. and it mm. brought both of the stations together. That was I remember buying a shirt to that and then yeah. pulled up Tip and Bone Crusher. But I think David Banner pulled up because he would come up with Flip or he would come up, you know, with his own self and Bone yeah. Crusher. We put that show together in two weeks. Wow. Heal the Hood one? Heal the Hood. Him yeah. and our, our boss at the time, Wayne K. Brown and Mary Catherine Sneed, they were like, we need to do something. And they were like, well, let's call Banner because he was popular at the time. And, you know, we we, we put it together. Everybody was all ready for it. And State Farm like did a great deal with us. And it was amazing. 
Yeah, he's one of those guys that'll just pull up. I mean, he had at one point in time, he had a studio on the back of his bus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we'll pull up to the back of the club and come perform, you know, basically. And he lived out of his van. Come to know? the back. Yeah, now this is right after the van. Okay. You know what I mean? And he would, you know, pull to the back of the club and uh, sat there and just listen to tracks, you know, that he was doing not just for himself, but for other people. You know, Birthday Bash is such a brand. You know, New Face, one of the things we've been kicking around is, and I know in the past, you know, I had to, with me only being in Atlanta three years, I have to constantly get a history lesson of a lot of, Nuances and ins and outs of things, but you know, one of the things that I think we we may do, we're trying to do this year, is we're really trying to get our merch game up. Mm. Uh, I think there's been a really missed opportunity, as yeah. you see, um, multiple people bootlegging who've made their own t-shirts outside with artists I on them. I bought one. You're you know, right. I just thought about that because I'm a merch person. You made yeah. your own. Yeah, I, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, every show I go to, I buy it. So yeah. I'm the, you're right. You got so, it. So and then you know, you get into it where you want the artists to be able to share in that if you're using. Pictures of them or their names. So, you know, that, that becomes, you know, very tough. But Birthday Bash is a brand, is a logo, a brand within a brand. I think, you know, this year, maybe the year we end up doing some towels, a trucker caps, or some kind of dope T-shirt to uh, mm-hmm. memorialize the moment in the night, you know, to do something that's, uh, you know, and you want you want to be fair. But at the same time, I just, people ask. And anytime I wear a jersey, you know, the, the year we had the MLK um, jerseys, you know, I had that, we did the shorts Mm-hmm. Also, the hoop shorts. Every time I wear them, somebody inevitably stops me. Awesome. And Gil and I were somewhere, and the guy goes, hey, mid-conversation, hey, man, where you get those birthday bash shorts? That's the most Atlanta <laughs> shit I've seen in a year. You know, oh, you got the sh- – uh, those are shorts? No, that's no, the shirt. I got the shirts at the house, but, yeah. you know. I, I mean, people love these. I mean, even yeah. this one. I love – this is one yeah. of my favorite shirts. I love this shirt. Yeah. But, I mean, this was a great jersey. I think this was the year, like, we really kind of, like, stepped up our, our jersey sure, game. because everybody you know? wore them. Yeah, everybody yeah. wore them. Princess, I remember it, we seeing them all taking yeah. pictures with all oh, of this them. Oh, this one, on. yeah, this one was epic. Yeah, I framed both of those in a shadow box with pictures of Georgia State sold out with 20,000 people. I, I got, got an really idea. Dope. You can One idea, you use my ticket stubs. Because I remember, like, Jay-Z did that where he put all his albums, you yeah. know, that, the sticker that comes on the CD, yeah. and oh. he just lined them all up. So imagine, like, one with all the ticket, ticket stubs. stubs. If we find the other ones to match, I know One Music Fest tried to do something like that with my ticket stubs, but you, we might can find enough ticket stubs, a birthday bash, and just for those people that have been to them all, because it's yeah. always fun to be like, yeah, I've been to that one and that one and that one. Because even remembering that one, I was like, oh, yeah, I did yeah. miss that one. I think it's important to evolve. Um, you know, we have a brand like that, to your point, you know, being from Detroit, you know, you got JLB and other special radio stations to people, but, you know, putting together these shows, and we put it together ourselves as. It's kind of a lost art form, mm-hmm. you know. That a lot of people can't do. They don't have the budget, or uh, you know, they don't have the relationships. Like it's it's a very it's a very tedious and it's a very hard mm-hmm. thing. So to yeah. be able to do that, I think it is special, um, you know, to do anything that you can to celebrate those moments. And I mean, we really think hard on that. Yeah, and I know? think I celebrated it more than just thinking of it as you're talking is about um, because um, summer jam in New York was always mm-hmm. popular and. I never felt that I would never felt fear of missing out or like I wish I was there, but I'm because I'm like, I we have this every year, yeah, yeah, and I think that's why I celebrated it so much because this was like Atlanta Summer Jam, that's you right. know what I'm saying? They would have the news and it kind of go viral, but I'm like, no, this watch, watch when this happens, yeah, we're gonna make some news too, and you know, it's something for the South. I'm gonna always champion the South, so. This is why it was always a tradition and just like a must, must go to an event for me, you know. Back up until the point, I'm like, text her, like, I'll see you there. But like I said, just to get the hug and to see you guys yeah. and, like, <laughs> waving and the pictures I show y'all pictures. I send y'all pictures after the show, like, like, yes. like worker ants. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man, you're always welcome. You know what I mean? Like, you do a good job and an amazing job of, um, you know, memorializing those moments and um, and, and putting them out there. You know, it's, Thank we're going to try to link up, you know, do something special this year, you know, with you to have you involved. I mean, I think it's important. You know, you become kind of a catalyst and people look. You know, out on the outside looking in to see, oh, let me see what New Face said about it. You know, there have been events that mm-hmm. I totally forget about. Like, there's so much shit going on in Atlanta. Like, you could go out every night of the week. Like, you can't go to every Like, I missed the BMF thing last week. I totally oh, yeah. blew it, and I missed it, and I text Holiday, and I was like, damn, I don't know you were going to spend. I didn't know DJing. you were spending. You know, and he was like, yeah, I forgot to tell everybody. You know, but it's just like, it's one of those days where I'd probably work 12, 13 hour days. I wanted to go home, and I looked up, and I was like, damn. But I think people on the outside look, you know, to you to see mm-hmm. what's happening. You know what I mean? In the city, kind of as a, um, you know, they as told a, me to come up with an app like the Where's Waldo, but Where's New Face app. And, that's and, and actually a really cute people. idea. And yeah. I coordinate really cool. with brands and clubs and give them discounts if you show them the app. And you know, because I am a lot of places. People tell me I'm living through you. I mm. go live and I'm gonna see you. And people, you know, either again to your point, they'd be like, Oh, I knew, I knew it was something I forgot. I was like. Yeah. 
I, I tell people, I post about it. I know where I'm going. Yeah. You know, and I tell people and invite them. And then I show them the picture. Oh, yeah, I just left with the mayor and T. Yeah. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. I should have went. No, he just told me about the killer Mike thing. I was like, dang, yeah, I didn't last know. Last night, we Grammy. Well, we I did, saw that. We did before that. We was at, oh, uh, Bronner Brothers. Oh, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm the ambassador for the, the his barbershop, the okay. swag shop. So oh, I, do, okay. I do the content and help there. So he got honored. And then we did the Grammy Award dinner with uh, all mayor. I'm telling her, all three mayors. Kasim, oh, wow. Andre. Keisha, that was awesome. Greenwood family, big boy, the whole team filled up. Um, and also Ray Daniels and Theron, his uh, he got yeah. a Grammy as well for a writer. So it was once again nice. a normal Sunday in Atlanta. Normal Sunday, yeah, normal Sunday. Normal, yeah. Oh, like yeah, that Wednesday just... Usher that day. That was I was uh, Chris Brown. I said they were both in this. Chris Brown lingerie party. I went to that. It was too cold, and so I went to Usher, <laughs> and it was too hot <laughs> and too crowded. But it was like. Atlanta's who's who yeah. was in there, and it was like, wow, this is amazing. And you know, so that's birthday bash for me. Conversation we've we've had since we started doing this podcast, and we've there's been a debate afterwards. We post a teaser um, for we talked about you know um, you know who your top three artists that you never that you'd want to see on birthday bash that have probably mm-hmm. never been on birthday bash or you know a uh, few of those aren't with us anymore. You know what I mean? Who would your top three be? I know it's probably a tough tough question you mm-hmm. know to ask. But you know, at the same time, you know, I, there's um, probably somebody. It's three six mafia, outcast, mm. three yeah, those and Jay Z, like a, a, a full on like Jay Z. Yeah, but three six mafia, of course. I mean, now we can't have Gangsta Boo, but to right. memorialize her and celebrate her, have that moment for three six mafia. That mm. would be awesome. Outcast, this is home. I know he's doing the flute thing now. You yeah. got a show tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get my Andre moment tomorrow. But imagine a whole like outcast. Yeah, not not a reunion, but we not tried. even like outcast. Just a real outcast show. Yeah, just, it's been year. I mean, I uh, didn't see them when they were here at Centennial Park. Oh, uh, at last, that's my top. That was amazing. Five. Yeah, top that five. That was a great show. That and Jeezy, uh, Fox ten year anniversary of Fox. Like those are in my top show. five shows. And Kanye West yeah. with Kendrick. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, Andre actually comes to Birthday Bash. Yeah. He just doesn't want to perform. Stage fright. He, yeah, he just he doesn't like go. Like he'll bring his son and like the friends and everything. Mm-hmm. Like they will call pretty much every year and like, hey, can Andre bring his son? You know. Yeah. But we're like, yeah, can he just come out on stage? And like, maybe next year. So the next year, we're like, yeah, can Andre come back? Wow. Because yeah. and that's the other cool thing. It wasn't magazines, but shout out to ATL Picks. Like mm-hmm. you go to his yeah. page mm-hmm. after, and you be like, oh, they were there, and it was Andre. And I remember that day, they, year they went to the Waffle House mm-hmm. with yeah. Kanye West, and they went bowling with Big Like, and it was like, and I'm like, Andre was there, ah, oh. but he ain't come perform. Yeah, that's the you know even um, shout out to ATL Picks. You know we have a great partnership with them every year, but I mean there are things that happen at Birthday Bash backstage that I don't even see. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know being front of house directing the show that I'm just like damn I don't know so and so so and so was there like where they come from like how did yeah. that you know how did that happen but you know they always and that's you know when you know people that know how to shoot and have multiple photographers mm-hmm. you know you hope you get that moment and capture that moment that's the thing um, that I'm dealing with now that balance of like because I have access to backstage but I do be missing like because I used to be in the, the nose week. like yeah. the tickets that I bought back then I, like I said I was working I wasn't I was about the cheapest ticket just yeah, to yeah. get in the building and I remember seeing the Lil Wayne show and the Cash Money Ruffer I'm really in the nosebleed when it was Philip so to be backstage, I still do look at the stage, and people are like, how you get on the stage? But I remember <laughs> those days, and I still be like, I miss those days, too. So it's it's cool to get, like, the, the best of both worlds in that yeah. moment. This year's birthday bash, as we get closer, we're going to put out some secrets. We're going to put out some teasers. You today know. actually is, by the time this drops, I mean, you know, yeah. it'll, it'll be out there. So today, the Save the Date drops. Yeah. You going to tell them? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, by the time you hear this, I mean, we already know. So it's Saturday, June 22nd. June. That was the other thing, you too. Know. Y'all would switch months sometimes. Because it would be on my Not, daughter's birthday, July 6th. I remember some birthdays, but then it would go. We would what's... typically try to stay Father's Day weekend, which I never liked Cause personally. Because Cameron's father's Day. Th- it was just a lot that weekend. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, that, third, that second or third 
weekend in, in June was the big thing. And then when fit, the Hawks and the renovations mm, and all that oh, happened, that we had to, every year we would have debate debating about, you know, Phillips Arena when they're yeah. doing the renovations. And then, you know, hey, you know, the Hawks, the playoffs do go through June. So if you're in early June mm -hmm. and the Hawks are in the playoffs, you're at the mercy of State Farm and whatever, you know, the Hawks end up doing. <laughs> Didn't that so, happen to Janet Jackson? They yeah. did. It, well, that was the some kind of tour or something like that, I she, think. Because they yeah. were in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, Man. So, uh, you know, people don't understand that side of the schedule. Like at State Farm, the Hawks have priority. So even right. if you book a date, if yeah. the Hawks are doing amazing <laughs> and Trey Young is on fire, you know, you got to move there. your event. So <laughs> so you say this year is in June. Yeah. So, June, you know, okay. we moved away from um, Father's Day weekend, which last year was on Father's Day, which is a little tough. Uh, you know, we do the brunch afterwards um, on Sunday. And, I mean, I literally left that and went to the airport to fly to New Orleans to be with my family, you know what I mean, for Father's Day. And I was literally, by Sunday night, I was sitting down to Agni eating oysters, you know what I mean? But <laughs> but still, you know, Father's Day is tough, and that's Juneteenth weekend, too. So not to mention you had a bunch of shows going on. Um, you had something at um, Home Depot Backyard. You had something at Centennial, mm -hmm. which you're not doing that anymore, but it's like it just added to it. I mean, Atlanta can support it. They can handle it, but it just causes for a traffic nightmare causes for a lot of other logistical nightmares as well. So moving it a week later, and it's also one of the things that I like about being at, as being as close to the end of the month is that final weekend is BET weekend. So right after Birthday Bash, the next weekend is BET. So you get everybody talking about Birthday Bash. I mean, we were fresh off of it last year. So when J. Nix broadcast live and went out there, I mean, it was really a celebration. Everybody talking about how dope the show was and um, seeing it. On the on the outside, looking in from other people and other mm -hmm. places, industry people, it's always cool, cool and gives you that real fulfilling feeling that saying, you know what, we really put something special together. You yeah. know what I mean? With, and with, social media helps that because you know before we would just be talking at the water cooler like days yeah. after birthday bash, right. you have to see them in person. But now it's like in real time they're tweeting about it, and if you're not there, you're learning about it. So yeah. you know you're like, oh, that was there. You know, like to your point, it's like oh, new face got it. it's on his page and yeah. it was there. So what's your philosophy as somebody that loves live shows, and you know you pretty much have you know carte blanche access to every show when it comes to here. What um. When it comes to streaming, how, how do you feel about that? It just in general, it doesn't mean we're going to stream the show this year mm -hmm. or not going to stream the show. Do you think? What do you think Birthday Bash would mean if we were able to stream it? I'm not a proponent. Is that the word? Like mm -hmm. I'm not really for it because it, it's just a different feel. It's really yeah. not the same, and it's so many. Like even with boxing, you buy a boxing or basketball, and, and the stream goes out. Yeah, and then they're complaining, and it's not a, a Birthday Bash thing. It's the satellite thing or the mm -hmm. cable company's thing. And it's just nothing like that's what the new face was there is about. It's like being in that moment, seeing that you're not like I like, you know, it got to the point with relationships. People are like, why are you in line, new face? Just call me and meet, you know. But I like the people chatting before the, the show and, and meeting their friends and seeing somebody you know. And like it's this, exclusive. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a real new style. It's part thing. of the experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. part of it. And man. you're not going to get that with a stream because it's just, I mean, what, what are you going to say? Yeah. Well, what Which, do you think about like how Beyonce and Taylor Swift do? So it's limited. For a certain amount of time to the people who were there, but mm -hmm. then you know, a couple weeks later, after editing Magic, Watch now it. it's on Netflix oh, or yeah. Hulu or something like that, and you can see it. Now that, like, yeah, we went to the movie theater, yeah, right? And yeah, see it. that yeah. that I would. I, I like feel like that. the edit that they did should have been. You know, y'all could sales team or whoever could have sold it to. Yeah, that's well, what I thought. That you, was, you know, one yeah. thing we're gonna do. You know, if you don't know, you know, we did. We formatted it for the movie screen and we showed it back mm -hmm. at um it was like great. at Atlantic yeah, Station, like but it was a long form. Like there was it needed to be edited. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I can tell you one of the things I can tell, you know, you and everybody listening is, you know, we have we're doing a lot of behind the scenes this year, which I think a lot of people don't get a chance to see from yeah. conversations with the artists, conversations with management, um, that kind of thing, you know. But that was a very quick edit. You know, I think the audio mm -hmm. could have been better, but I think we're gonna do a charity event. Um, after it gets edited and we want to do a red carpet, step and repeat the whole yeah. nine yards. So, yeah, because you remember, we even I'm sitting next to Fable and his part came on. Yeah. It, got, oh, yeah. it got live in the movie theater. Did, like yeah. we it were did. at birthday bash. Yeah. <laughs> but there were, you know, from Fabo to a lot of other people who, you know, from management to our label friends, you know, it's kind of like saying, hey, look, man, let's sit back, let's enjoy the, uh, you know, let's enjoy our work. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Let's enjoy and let's watch it. Because there were things, like I said, I'm 150 yards away. I don't see a lot of things that happen mm -hmm. that were happening. So, but you know, I think one of the things we are going to push forward is we're going to do that, and I think we're going to do it in the form of a community is uh, some kind of you know charitable partnership. Good. You know, some kind of it. give back. You know, we charge 20 bucks to get in, and there's no ticket price. The money goes 100 percent goes to charity. But right. for us mm -hmm. to be able to walk the red carpet and go, hey, look, 
this is what we did, especially if it's as special as last year was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's a real dope thing. But, um, you know, back to streaming, um, you know, streaming is a streaming is interesting. I'm I'm selfish like you. Like, I want people to be at the show, mm-hmm. and I want it to sell out. I want people to go, damn, I didn't get my ticket. Mm-hmm. And if we did something afterwards, to your point, Beyonce, I'm a, I'm a fan of that too. Is yeah. Hulu or Netflix? Or, I'm even conflicted being there, with, holding my phone because I come from the time where, yeah, like, yeah. I got a picture of Kanye his first show where I took a picture and it's it's one dude doing like this and one dude had a cell phone up. Mm. You go to a Kanye West show now, everybody's yeah. gonna have a phone up. Yeah. yeah. So even me as I'm, you know, I'm transparent, and I'm showing it. I'm, I do a little quick one. I'm like. I just want to be old school. Like I'm just man, I appreciate you joining us and hanging out with us, man. Thank Put your you. social media out there if they want to get in touch with you and um, check out everything you have going on. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, thank you for guys what you do for the city, the culture, um, and radio, the tradition. I'm always still a fan. Um, hashtag new face was there. You can start there, but new at face. new face. Um, you can catch me on MySpace, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, <laughs> Thread, X, <Yeah>. <laughs> Black Single, Mingle, Church, all those, but <laughs> at New Face. You know, you can catch me there. YouTube, you can catch me um, playing, ironically, uh, Little John in the new Trillville movie coming soon. Nice. Um, I'll be playing Little John. and Wow. Uh, Catch me, uh, I do a show at Giorgio's um, called The New Style, interviewing rappers on some like Oom Camp live TV yeah, yeah. show, so I do that. Um, and I'm with Jerry Clark on the Radio. Okay. You know, doing interviews there. I Shout out to Big Jerry. Beyonce, put your social out there. At Beyonce, ATL, real simple, on everything. MySpace, Black Planet, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since you said it. But yeah, no, TikTok, all that. Beyonce, ATL. I'm going to put out uh, Gil since uh, Gil didn't join us. He's because usually, he's working on Birthday he's Bash. He's working on Birthday oh. Bash. He's at the real Gil Jones. I was a like, marketing director, an amazing marketing director for all four of our brands here. My name is Devin Steele. It's Devin, D-E-V-I-N underscore Steele, S-T-E-E-L. I'm the program director here. And of course, um. Directed birthday bash show, so um, man, spread the spread the uh, love. You know what I mean. Use the hashtag behind the bash, and uh, we'll holler at you in a minute. Hey, we are out. Thank you guys.